Well, good morning, friends. How you doing today? Good. Well, excellent. As we're listening to today's, look, you know, it is funny. We are living in, living in different times, and sacred scripture really can speak to us in various ways inside there and be very, ta- uh, very uh, uh, current to, to the present day. Today we have a letter, uh, a letter uh, from uh, the first letter of St. Peter, and how does it start? I always love when it starts with this word, beloved. It's such an intimate word, but it says, beloved, do not be surprised that a trial by fire is occurring among you as if something strange were happening to you. And I'm going to guess we all kind of feel like something strange is happening to us at this point, don't we? Certainly if we're all wearing masks, or most of us are wearing masks, that's one of those strange things that happens to us. But one of the things we're reminded of, and sacred scripture does for us, it comforts us and it assures us. It reminds us that God is with us. And we're called to take up the gospel and to love God. Now, when we listen to today's gospel, it really kind of will throw some people for a loop. Because when it says, Jesus, I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against a mother-in-law, and one's enemies will be those of his household. Wow, it's not something we expect Jesus saying. You know, when he goes off, do not think that I've come to bring peace upon the earth. Well, we're thinking, wait a second, you're the Prince of Peace. Yeah, I guess I would think you're bringing peace upon the earth. But what in this particular passage of the gospel is he referencing? Is he contradicting himself as Prince of Peace? No. Is he trying to get people's attention? Certainly. That's how this is going to come across. He's getting our attention inside there. And think about the time that he wrote this. Remember, he's going off there, and he's going through the Hebraic texts and he's helping people to understand what God is communicating through them. But now that he's coming to establish a new and eternal covenant, which is much different in some ways, he's going off there and he realizes that there are going to be two parties, those who are going to follow him and those who aren't. But he realizes that most of the people who hear this word, you know, these are pious Jews. And they're going to take very serious what's being said. So he realizes in families, there are going to be great arguments about this. And there are going to be families going to split apart. And it's going to split apart just over Jesus. Now, some of that family is going to remain Jewish completely. And then the others are going to break off to this new way. And they're going to become Christians themselves. And that's going to bring really hard feelings. Now, Jesus realizes that there's some pain that goes into this, and that certainly separation inside there isn't what he wants, but he wants them all to, agree, all to understand that he is the Son of God, the Messiah, that he's come into the world to save us. But he's speaking and he's saying here in a very clear way that there's some who are going to get it and some who aren't going to get it, some who are going to refuse to get it. And, you know, isn't that true inside our present day, present day as well? You know, there's some who really get things and some who don't. Some who really understand the gospel and bring it into their lives and enact it, and some who do just don't think that it's relevant inside their lives. Well, thank goodness that we find and count ourselves amongst those who see the relevance inside here and undertake it inside their lives. We're very lucky. And we're very blessed, I should say, not lucky, but more blessed than anything else, that we are believers. That a few weeks ago, we celebrated the Feast of the Corpus Christi, the body, soul, and divinity of Jesus Christ. How blessed are we that we believe that's not just a symbol or a sign, but that really is that and much more because it has the physical presence of Jesus inside there, inside of it, and that it sustains us and it feeds us. And what does that do for us? Well, if we really ponder what the Eucharist enacted inside our daily lives, think about this. If God's inside of us, His power is inside of us. And that power can help us to fasten on to trusting Him and knowing that He's going to provide for us. In Easter, He keeps on saying, My peace is with you always. The Eucharist is that source, that food that we have inside our lives to come to believe and to do. 
Today the church remembers the life of St. Thomas More. He was one who was very devout. He loved the Eucharist and he received it frequently. Thomas More lived in a time in which the Protestant Reformation was taking a place in which King Henry VIII set up the Church of England. And he refused to take an oath of fidelity to Charles as the head of the Church of England. He sought unity and he realized that what was happening wasn't bringing unity. His whole life, and we celebrate today as a martyr, we celebrate his life because all his work was about unifying, keeping the church unified, keeping the people unified. That's what he sought inside there. Not that he didn't think that there were things wrong with the church that needed to be addressed and taken care of, but he realized that it was equally important to keep us together. And he gave his life for that. And so many people through their life have given their lives as martyrs for the church. We thank God for the great gift that they are. Maybe one of the ways that we acknowledge their gifts is by living faithful and loving lives and trusting God in all things and letting Him be the one who navigates our lives through this difficult pandemic. Thank you so much.